Surely that's the first house we've seen in miles. Can't go on. The top's torn and I'm soaked to the skin, drenched. Please, let's go inside. They have rooms to rent. In that place? Oh, Charlie, I'm so cold and wet. At the risk of being a bore, I'm compelled to remind you that you, you insisted, insisted we honeymoon, honeymoon in the, the sunny, sunny south. south. You're no gentleman, Charlie Denham. So we get caught in a picturesque storm, so sue me. We'll never find our way back to that trailer camp. We're lost. We're not lost. We're just temporarily off course, that's all. And we're not going to spend the night in that place. No, we're... Say, you really are cold. If I don't get warm pretty soon. Well, they probably don't even have electricity in that place. Who cares? Well, you're brave now, but don't be surprised when I bang on that old fashioned knocker and it comes off in my hand. Why would it do that? Dry rot. Then there'll be shuffling footsteps, and the creaking door will be opened by a nasty looking old coot. Well, I promise not to scream. He'll be so glad to see us. But don't be surprised. There'll be a mocking gleam in his green eyes when he starts talking about the legend. Legend? Of the vampires that hang out around here, darling. <laughs> Not that he believes in such things, but... But what makes his teeth so sharp? You know, I actually think you're beginning to enjoy this. Next to travel folders, I just adore mysteries. Well, all right. Let's make a run for it. the old-fashioned knocker. <laughs> there, you see, no dry rot, darling. No wonder your stories haven't been selling lately. Charlie is not only an imaginative writer, but has another most unusual talent as well. Peopling his stories with flesh and blood characters. Or was that old man flesh and blood? Now, don't answer too quickly. For this is the sort of night when all manner of unnatural creatures crawl through the dark corners of the earth. When the full moon cowers behind the storm, and the wolfbane reaches out with its evil, hungry branch. Yes, my friends, on just such a night as this, who knows what masquerade the living dead may choose? Masquerade is the name of our story. And the masqueraders, may I present Mr. and Mrs. Charlie Denham, played by Elizabeth Montgomery and Tom Poston. John Carradine, Jack Lambert, and Dorothy Newman as the infamous Carters. Now that you've been formally introduced, I'll make you a promise. Before this terrifying adventure is ended, you'll change some of your outdated ideas about vampires. Sure as my name is Boris Karloff. Don't be alarmed. I assure you the old faithful weapons are not outdated. And those of you who happen to have some silver bullets or sharp 
pointed wooden stakes around the house have nothing whatever to fear. As for you others, perhaps you'll be prepared next time. If there is a next time. <laughs> get awfully hungry in between. Ross! Hungry? Uh, it's a little private joke, mister, isn't it, Ross? Aren't you proud of me, Charlie? I told you I wouldn't scream. Scream? Don't pay any attention to her, mister. She always gets a little lightheaded when she's missed a meal. <laughs> so do I. Oh, well, at last, a kindred spirit. That's enough, Ross. She don't bother me none, young fella. She's got a sense of humor. That's good. She'll need it. Why? Do you intend eating us? We don't eat visitors. We just kill them and steal their money. Scared you, didn't I? Don't deny it. I know that look. Come in the parlor and get warm, if you dare. Oh, no, you don't. Charlie, really, I'd rather not. Well, I'm going to teach you a lesson, you and your perverse sense of humor. Oh, couldn't we just go on? Sooner or later, we're bound to find the highway with that nice-looking trailer camp and those nice-looking people. But, darling, you said you'd perish if you didn't get warm soon, remember? Well, I didn't mean to be wise. Charlie, I'm scared. You scared? I don't believe it. Well, I am. But you know, darling, my author's instinct tells me there's a story here. We've already met one fascinating character. Charlie Denham, you're being deliberately spiteful. On our honeymoon? Decided to chance it, eh? Yeah, my wife insisted. Mm. She's got spunk. I like a woman with spunk. Thanks loads. I'm Jed Carter. Make yourself to home. Well, thanks. Uh, say, could we borrow some dry clothes? My wife's so uncomfortable in those wet things, and so am I. Oh, I... I guess I didn't introduce myself, Charlie Denham. I just... This is my wife, Roz. Uh, honeymooners. Well, sort of. It's our second honeymoon. Uh. So far, uh, it's been a lot more fun than our first adventure together. Isn't that right, darling? Yes, it's been positively hilarious. My wife's quite a card. She's the only woman smarter than I that I don't hate. You'll soon learn to hate me, Charlie Denham. Are, uh, we the only guests here? That's right. Used to have a lot of guests here. Long, long time ago. Most of them didn't want to stay. They was mad. Place ain't like that anymore. That's your story. Have a look around. You think we're hiding something, missus? Well, thanks. Maybe we will. Roz just adores musty old places. I'll get you some dry clothes. That is, if you don't mind being left alone here. We don't need a chaperone, thank you. That's good. Some people around here got some mighty queer ideas. Like what? Did you ever hear tell of vampires? Yes. Sure. Well, there's been a sight of peculiar deaths around here lately. <laughs> Caused by vampires, naturally. Only a fool would take any stock in such notions, son. Did you notice, darling, he had green eyes? He was. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to pour it on so thick. You really are scared. The way you were wisecracking at the door, I thought I was the only one that was scared. I was petrified. 
I just said the first thing that came into my head. Naturally, it was something funny. Well, can I help it if I have a laugh track for a brain? <laughs> Did you notice his teeth are sharpened? Now, stop that. Start peeling. Here, you can wrap up in this. Put this... Oh, boy. Charlie. Hmm? Charlie, you know, there's something about that man that really frightens me. The way he ogles you, he's got good taste. Uh-oh. No, I'm serious. I think he plans to keep us here. Nonsense. Next, you'll be telling me he really is a vampire. Hey, what an idea for a story. Instead of the conventional vampire type, you know, with the dress suit and the opera cape, we have this old hillbilly type, like Carter. Nobody would believe you. Why not? People have certain preconceived ideas about vampires. You sound just like a story editor. Well, now, that's not a very nice thing to say. I was only trying to help! Charlie, he's got green eyes, too. All our kin's got green eyes. Grandpa sent me with these. I'm Lem Carden. Hello. We like visitors. Ma's coming down to say howdy. She's changing her clothes. Putting on a clean shroud, no doubt. Now, never mind, Lem. Just go away. And don't peek through the keyhole. just slip into this little creation. Notice the typically musty smell of the vampire's wardrobe. Oh, shut up. Be sure to check your pockets for bats and crawling things, darling. <laughs> So funny. Hmm? What are you laughing at? I didn't laugh. You certainly did. <gasps> Charlie! What is it? What's the matter? Oh! Look out, look out! Oh, Charlie Denham, you're a coward. A coward? Take my coward's hand and let's get out of here. Where are we going? Who cares? Hey, I smell food cooking. That means there must be flesh and blood people in this menagerie somewhere. Don't you think we should wait for Lem's mother? Maybe that's who just dive bombs. Let me do this one. You killed the last one. And the one before that, too. If you mind about that, you just shell them peas for the stew. This ain't no job for a grown man. Somebody got to do it. Well, why can't you do this? Let me take the knife to her. I'll do it right, I promise. For the last time, no. Some things any fumble fish can do, like shelling peas there. And some things are taken savvy and know-how. When it comes to slitting the throat, there ain't no substitute for experience. But I done it before. It ain't as a blem, I'm telling you, no. You promised flesh and blood people. Shut up. Hi. Expecting an invasion? Can't butch you with a dull knife. Who'd you have in mind? Lem's fixing your supper. Sit down. There's only two places set. You're not eating? Lem and me will eat later. Guess who? Sometimes you just beg for trouble. She don't rile me none, son. As a matter of fact, I admire her nerve. It's nothing but camouflage. I'm really scared stiff. Of me? I keep taking you seriously. Ain't used to our country ways, huh? 
Among other things. As, while we're on the subject of things, what about Lem's mother? Be dead ten years. What? Well, he told us she was changing her clothes. Boy, forget sometimes. Way she died, it's a wonder he didn't go raving mad like his pa. Like his pa? Uh, come home late one night to see her lying there in the bed. Her eyes staring, her mouth twisted into a scream that never got out. And her skin the color of white candle wax. What happened to her? Vampires, what else? Darling, Mr. Carter said he didn't believe in such things. Then why does he keep mentioning the subject? I didn't mention vampires. You did. But you're right. That's when the legend of the Henshaw vampires started. Which you reject. Of course I reject it. White-faced devils that turn into bats and fly through cracks. <laughs> you think a vampire changed with the time. Mr. Carter, if you're... I figure if he acted more or less like other people, they wouldn't suspect what he was. He might even carry on like he was before. Before he died. Mr. Carter, if you're trying to frighten me, let me tell you Ross, right now that you have not... he was just joking, weren't you, Mr. Carter? You said you was hungry. Sit. Let me have your stew ready in a little while. Thank you. But I've suddenly lost my appetite, and I'm going back by the fire. You coming? She said she was hungry. Well, you know how changeable women are. Besides, Roz is a, a vegetarian. <laughs> Darling, you're not being a very good guest. Don't you speak to me. Now what's wrong? I heard you say I was a vegetarian. Well, I had to say something. You're supposed to be a creative writer. Seems to me you're losing your sense of humor. I am not. I just don't like that man, that's all. Because he keeps topping you? Because he's horrid. But, darling, you started all the wisecracks about vampires. We're getting out of here, now. Without our clothes? Now. But... Here, let me try. <laughs> yes. We're locked in. <laughs> I am not amused. Well, don't bite my head off. Well, then stop that stupid laughter. I didn't laugh. You did. Suppose that old man really meant what he said about vampires changing with the times. Of course not. He's just a local yokel trying to throw a scare into us. Then why are we locked in? And who or what was that laughing? I don't know, but we're going to find out before the gag gets out of hand. send you to a psychiatrist. Mr. Carter? Mr. Carter? Lamb? Where do you suppose they went? How do I know? Maybe they just flew down the hall. Why are they collecting the blood? Emergency rations. Really? Well, don't ask silly questions. Come on. What do you expect to find up 
there. Our hosts, hanging with their sharp little claws and watching us with beady eyes. Can you stop that? <laughs> Darling, are you all right? Yes, I think so. Raz, look. Not even a mouse could squeeze out through this. I have a feeling it isn't meant to keep mice in. <laughs> yeah, I see what you mean. Sounds like a woman. Upstairs, maybe. Let's find out. No, no. Darling, we can't just stay here and be laughed at. Why not? Because it's degrading. Besides, our hosts will think we're chicken. I've been shaking in my feathers ever since we came in here. Oh, come on. They'll be disappointed if we don't go along with the gag. Gag? Was you paying attention when the old man said he and Lem would eat later? So what? That was stew, Lem was cooking. It's an authority on vampires. You want to know they don't eat solids. The way they looked at me, I felt like that poor pig must have felt when they chose him. Funny, I remember that same look the first time you laid eyes on me. <laughs> That's a horrible thing to say. Oh, Charlie, she can't be up there. Dust on those stairs is an inch thick. She wouldn't need stairs if she can fly. Honestly. Watch out for secret panels. And clutching hands. They're going to a lot of trouble to scare us. Recognize the hungry look and the green eyes. Uh, I'm uh, Charlie Denham, and this is my wife, Roz. I know. Jed told me you was here. I'm Ruthie Carter. He never mentioned you. <laughs> Far as Jed's concerned, I'm dead. Oh, then you're Lem's mother. I'm no kin of them Carters. Twas Halsey Carter I married, and we was happy too. Till Lem's ma, my fancy sister-in-law, took a shine to my Halsey. But I fixed her, <laughs> and him too. You killed them? Jed thinks so. And that's not a responsive answer. You got any idea what it's like to ache for your freedom? Ache so bad you laugh and cry and carry on like a thing? Well, we're beginning to get that idea. You wouldn't happen to know a way out of this place, would you? Set me free and I'll show you. Keys hanging outside the door. Lady, you've got a deal. Are you out of your mind? You want to get out of here, don't you? She's obviously dangerous. Why do you think they have her in chains? 
Well, as anybody can see, this poor woman is just a victim of Carter's sadism. Uh, maybe on our way out, you could direct us back to the highway. We're stopping at a uh, trailer camp about 20 miles down the road. Under the stars, it's called. It's run by a nice rosy cheeked couple that Ross and I spark to right away. <laughs> What's the matter? Did I say something funny? Hey, what's the idea? Hey, you promised! I'll be back for you, my pretties, never fear. <laughs> hey, hey, come back here! Come back here! Hey! All right, go ahead, say it. Far be it from me to criticize. After all, what gentleman could stand to see a poor, defenseless woman kept in chains? But it occurs to me, Charlie Denham, that you're not very bright. Hey, Ross. Now what is it? The way she said she'd be back for us. What do you suppose she meant? <laughs> Give you three guesses, Sir Galahad. Stretching. Well, I'm not an octopus, you know. Oh! My best shoes. Make a note of it for your divorce complaint. And what's more, Your Honor? You deliberately ruined my best shoes. Charlie, don't you leave me. Hey, what do you say we forgive old bumbling old Charlie Denham, huh? No. Please? Never. All right, then. Every man for himself. Let's go see if we can find our way out of this creep joint, you game. Anything. Just so long as you never leave me. The way you've got me hooked, fat chance. Sorry. Darling, after you, any ordinary woman would bore me to death. Come on. Be careful. She might be down there waiting for us. Somebody just walked out of that wall, or...
not going down there. Well, we've looked everywhere else. Come on, maybe we'll find a secret passageway to the gatekeeper's cottage. I didn't see any gatekeeper's cottage. Neither did I, but if I were writing this crazy story, I'd invent one right about now. Come on, let's have a look. And don't forget to count the steps. There should be exactly 13. 13 steps to do. Hmm. Nope, only 12. 14. Darling, if we split the difference. Oh, shut up. <laughs> you know, let's get this over with. I hate dark places. You know, I'm really beginning to worry about you, Roz. What's that? Something to thicken the plot. That's liquor. Mountain Dew, honey child. Oh, no. Don't be that way, honey. Well, I haven't forgotten what happened the last time you started drinking. It very nearly finished us. Nag, nag, nag. Hey, Ross. Hmm? Look at this. What? Look at this, the guest book. Thomas Darty, $57.53. Gold watch, ring. Mr. and Mrs. Owen Alva, $200. Wristwatch, fur coat, jewelry. There must be 50 names in here. Saints preserve us. I've asked you and asked you to watch your language. Now, what are you up to? Mr. and Mrs. Charlie Denton. It's not funny. Care to list your valuables? <laughs> Do you know what this is? It's a list of their victims. We probably have them buried down here. Dibs on the first skeleton. You weren't so brave when that Ruthie locked us in upstairs. All right, I admit she had me going for a minute, but really, Roz, this is too much. Register of victims. You're so positive it's all a big joke. Well, what else could it be? What you people doing down here? We got to wondering if you had a bomb shelter. One feels a bit safer with world conditions the way they are. Huh. You two don't scare easy. We didn't even get duck bumps when we found your guest register. Speak for yourself. You don't think we really kill people to stop here, missus? Perhaps you'd care to explain that woman we found chained upstairs. Ain't no woman in the place except you. Then what do you call her? Ruthie. There you go again with those unresponsive answers. You shouldn't have turned her loose, young fella. Why shouldn't I have turned her loose, Mr. Carter? You don't expect us to admit she's a vampire. That would spoil the mystery. I'd like to know why all the doors are locked. And why the windows are screened so that not even a mouse can squeeze out. To keep Ruthie in. You know, Roz, when she turns into a bat. You forget such notions. You sleep better. Come along. Lem's aired out of bed for you. I'm not sleepy. Don't be a spoil sport. <laughs> Master bedroom. Cozy as a coffin. What's this, a Henshaw County shroud? If you think we're murderers, why don't you leave? The door's locked. You might ask me to unlock it. 
Did it ever occur to you that we might not be sheep? You haven't even asked us how we got here or where we came from. What a sweet touch, his and hers. There's probably another secret panel in here. Or a trap door. Or a portrait with eyes that glow in the dark. That one! I don't know why I put up with you. Because I'm charming, amusing, and a good provider. I did very well before I met you. You were a famished little mouse. Charlie. So you found a door. Congratulations. But it's locked. It is. Uh... Oh, come on, help me. Maybe we can force it. Why not try the key? What key? The key on the molding over the door. How do you know there's a key up there? Because that's where I'd hide it if I were Carter and wanted us to think we were discovering some terrible secret. I'll bet. Stripped from their latest victim, uh, Benjamin Gatey. You'll find his identification somewhere handy. How'd you know? The guest register. His name was just ahead of ours. Alas, poor Ben. I knew him well. <laughs> rats. And I despise you more. You knew there'd be a rat in there. Oh, I'm sorry. The rat I didn't think of, but the key and the clothes and the wallet, well, they just had to be there for us to find. It's all part of the gag. <laughs> there, there, darling. <laughs> you stick with old bumbling Charlie Denham and everything will be roses. I'll perish if I don't get out of here pretty soon. Well, the Carters aren't that distasteful. I thought you liked brawny young men. Lamb? And that old man? Ugh, makes my stomach turn. Try remembering, darling. It isn't storming, and we're not here. It's a balmy moonlight night, and we're in that little park where you picked me up. You picked me up. What's the difference? Whoo, boy, Charlie, how much of that liquor did you drink? What kind of a question is that? Where is it? What, where's what? Where's that bottle? What bottle? Where's that liquor? Liquor? I don't know come, what you oh, Come on, Charlie. Oh, Hand the it moonshine. Off. Yes, it's in the cellar. I don't think so. Come I on, Charlie, give me that bottle. We Charlie. Left the stealth, don't us. That tickles. That tickles. That tickles. That tickles. That when will I ever be able to trust you? Say, that stuff really puts you into orbit. Fuel up, baby, we'll sail to the moon. <laughs> oh, don't, come on, don't be a party pooper. Will you pull yourself together? We've got to get out of here. We're in trouble. Can you imagine us getting trapped by a couple of country yokels? That's hilarious, Ross. Really hilarious. <laughs> Dare go to sleep on me. Hey, what an idea for a story. Two hillbillies trap a vampire, and when she gets hungry, they feed her on tourists, preferably hummy nooners.
once your murderous game backfired. No, no, you gotta believe me. That was only a joke, all that talk about vampires. That's what you think. Where's Roz? Where's my wife? I don't know. You're lying. Oh, I swear it. I don't know. All right, then where's that Ruthie? Ruthie? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> She's in the cellar. No, no, you mustn't go down there. Something down there you don't want me to see? Something Ruthie's up to? No, ain't it bad enough the vampire already got limb? Oh, you don't want to be left alone, is that it? No, Pete, don't go down there. Pete, don't go down there. Billy isn't born. I can get the best of me. and found you were gone. Oh, it was a close call, but I'm all right now. I'll tell you about it later. Look, I had to bean him to get it. Come on, let's get out of here while we still can. <laughs> And decent. I suppose you are now. <laughs> you look mighty ravishing, Miss Denham. You're just saying that because you're stuck with me. <laughs> How did I ever get so lucky? Let's not take any more drives in the picturesque backcountry, promise? Mm-mm. That awful place. And those horrible people. I don't care what you say, they were murderers. That's right. You mean all the time you knew? That's right. And you kept trying to make me think it was all a big joke. You were actually protecting me. Oh, shucks, ma'am. It weren't nothing. Oh. <laughs> well, next time we get caught in a storm, I promise to do exactly what you say. Uh, if you hadn't insisted on going into that creep joint, I would have, just to be contrary. That old man started talking about vampires changing with the times. I was really scared. I wonder where he got that idea. Well, I don't know. 
Well, I don't like it. It's subversive. You know, I may write a book on the subject. Call it, uh, Vampires, Their Origin and Evolution. Oh, sounds dreadfully stuffy. Well, it would be for the trade only, of course. A limited edition. <laughs> Hey, do you hear that? Oh, yes, I'm coming. Well, hurry up. It's almost dawn. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Oh, I'd give anything to see old man Carter's face when he wakes up and finds Ruthie with those two puncture marks I left in her throat. I don't see how you could have touched her. And what about you and that limb? I couldn't help myself. So cold. Ditto. Well, we won't talk about it, Charlie, ever again. Amen to that. Will you please watch your language? And turn out that light. Nag, nag, 